Cambridge first certificate in English too, by the University of Cambridge ESOL examinations in conjunction with Cambridge University Press. This recording is copyright. CD1. This is the Cambridge first certificate in English listening test. Test 1. I'm going to give you the instructions for this test. I'll introduce each part of the test and give you time to look at the questions. At the start of each piece, you'll hear this sound. You'll hear each piece twice. Remember, while you're listening, write your answers on the question paper. You'll have five minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the separate answer sheet. There will now be a pause. Please ask any questions now because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. You'll hear people talking in eight different situations. For questions one to eight, choose the best answer A, B or C. One. You hear part of a radio play. Where is the scene taking place? A. In the street. B. In a bank. C. In a police station. So, what happened, madam? Well, I saw this old man. He was kind of holding this briefcase under his arm like this. He'd just left the bank and I was still queuing up to collect my pension, but I was near that door. Now, this young man came running past him and grabbed him by the arm. And they both fell down? Yeah, and the young man ran away and the poor old man sat on the pavement, still clutching his briefcase. And we managed to help him up. Uh, now, can I go back in to collect my money? Would you mind coming with us, madam? We need a few more details. So, what happened, madam? Well, I saw this old man. He was kind of holding this briefcase under his arm like this. He'd just left the bank and I was still queuing up to collect my pension, but I was near that door. Now, this young man came running past him and grabbed him by the arm. And they both fell down? Yeah, and the young man ran away and the poor old man sat on the pavement, still clutching his briefcase. And we managed to help him up. Uh, now, can I go back in to collect my money? Would you mind coming with us, madam? We need a few more details. 2. You overhear the beginning of a lecture. What subject are the students taking? A. Medicine B. Sport C. Music It's important that you really listen to what people are telling you. For example, I had a trumpet player who came to see me with back pain and breathing difficulties. He couldn't take his final exams because of the muscular tension in his jaw. But when I quizzed him about it, it turned out that the actual problem was in his teeth, far away from where the pain actually was. The same applies to sports people, who often have injuries as a result of their job. It's important that you really listen to what people are telling you. For example, I had a trumpet player who came to see me with back pain and breathing difficulties. He couldn't take his final exams because of the muscular tension in his jaw. But when I quizzed him about it, it turned out that the actual problem was in his teeth, far away from where the pain actually was. The same applies to sports people, who often have injuries as a result of their job. 3. You overhear a conversation in a college. Who is the young man? A. A new student. B. A student in the middle of a course. C. A former student. It all looks so different. Where's the canteen? It's in the basement. You get there by going down the main staircase from the entrance hall. Right. I'll get there in the end. 
Everything seems to have moved around. Yes, there was a rebuilding programme last year, which wasn't much fun for those of us trying to study. The main building was altered a lot, and they're building a new sports centre. It should be open for the new students in September. <sighs> well, I'm envious. Everything looks a lot better. It all looks so different. Where's the canteen? It's in the basement. You get there by going down the main staircase from the entrance hall. Right. I'll get there in the end. Everything seems to have moved around. Yes. There was a rebuilding programme last year, which wasn't much fun for those of us trying to study. The main building was altered a lot, and they're building a new sports centre. It should be open for the new students in September. <sighs> well, I'm envious. Everything looks a lot better. 4. You hear a woman on the radio talking about a cookbook. What does she regret? A. Not looking after it. B. Not having kept it. C. Not using it properly. I used to watch Granny cooking, and right from when I was five years old, I was allowed to season the soups, test the potatoes and so on. One year for my birthday, she bought me a cookbook. It was just like Granny talking. All recipes were simple, economical and linked with little stories, useful advice and amusing sketches. I treasured it, but gradually it fell to bits from overuse. My taste changed and finally I threw it out. Now, of course, I wish I'd hung on to it, despite its sad state, and despite the fact that all the advice would be out of date. I used to watch Granny cooking, and right from when I was five years old, I was allowed to season the soups, test the potatoes and so on. One year for my birthday, she bought me a cookbook. It was just like Granny talking. All recipes were simple, economical and linked with little stories, useful advice and amusing sketches. I treasured it, but gradually it fell to bits from overuse. My taste changed and finally I threw it out. Now, of course, I wish I'd hung on to it, despite its sad state and despite the fact that all the advice would be out of date. 5. You hear someone talking about the day he met someone famous. How did he feel after meeting Chris Turner? A. Unimpressed with the footballer. B. Angry with his friend. C. Disappointed with himself. I went to a party with a friend and she knows that I'm a big fan of Chris Turner, the footballer. I just think he's a genius and anyway, he was going to be there. Now, I knew that I'd be really shy, which is stupid because he's exactly the same age as me and, you know, he's just a regular bloke, I'm sure. But when my friend introduced us and he shook my hand, my mouth just went, you know, really dry and I didn't know what to say, honestly, which was awful. I felt so bad about it afterwards, my friend just couldn't understand it. I went to a party with a friend and she knows that I'm a big fan of Chris Turner, the footballer. I just think he's a genius and anyway, he was going to be there. Now, I knew that I'd be really shy, which is stupid because he's exactly the same age as me and, you know, he's just a regular bloke, I'm sure. But... When my friend introduced us and he shook my hand, my mouth just went, you know, really dry and I didn't know what to say, honestly, which was awful. I felt so bad about it afterwards, my friend just couldn't understand it. 6. You hear a woman talking on the phone. Why has she called? A. To request a meeting. B. To offer assistance. C to apologise for her absence. Hi. Can I just talk to you about our plans for the summer conference? I think I said that I was going to be away for the opening meeting and couldn't give you a hand, but it seems I got my diary muddled up and I will actually be around. So, um, what would you like me to do? 
Hi. Can I just talk to you about our plans for the summer conference? I think I said that I was going to be away for the opening meeting and couldn't give you a hand, but it seems I got my diary muddled up and I will actually be around. So, um, what would you like me to do? 7. You overhear an extract from a radio play. What is the young woman's relationship with the man? A. She's a pupil of his. B. She's a relative of his. C. She's a patient of his. So, Sophie, tell me all about it. I'm sorry, but I've just been feeling terrible for the last week or so. And last night I just couldn't do my homework. I felt so bad. I was aching all over. So my dad said I had better make an appointment and come and see you. Perhaps you can tell me what's wrong. So, Sophie, tell me all about it. I'm sorry, but I've just been feeling terrible for the last week or so. And last night I just couldn't do my homework. I felt so bad. I was aching all over. So my dad said I had better make an appointment and come and see you. Perhaps you can tell me what's wrong. 8. You hear someone telling a story about a strange thing that happened in the mountains. What point does the story prove? A. How strange things can be explained simply. B. How easy it is to imagine things. C. How you can be tricked by the silence. My wife Margaret and I were sitting behind a rock on the top of a mountain in the highlands one day. Nobody else around. Perfectly silent. And Margaret said, I just heard a telephone bell ringing. Oh, I said, Margaret, there are no telephone kiosks up here. But in the silence of the hills, you can imagine anything. I said, I often imagine things. I've heard babies crying in this silence. I've thought I heard a symphony orchestra. And Margaret said, I'm sure I heard a telephone ringing. She got up and went round the back of the rock. And there was a cow with a bell around its neck. My wife Margaret and I were sitting behind a rock on the top of a mountain in the highlands one day. Nobody else around. Perfectly silent. And Margaret said, I just heard a telephone bell ringing. Oh, I said, Margaret, there are no telephone kiosks up here. But in the silence of the hills, you can imagine anything. I said, I often imagine things. I've heard babies crying in this silence. I've thought I heard a symphony orchestra. And Margaret said, I'm sure I heard a telephone ringing. She got up and went round the back of the rock. And there was a cow with a bell around its neck. That's the end of part one. Now turn to part two.